everyone, welcome once again to Miami Minutes, the home of the old slash and dash. Uh, <laughs> I am one of the hosts, Lyle McGowan. And I am your other host, John Parker. And I was going to say I'm not going to leave you drowning in a river, but you know what? I will. Yo, oh. I'm, a, I'm a sick freak. Well, me personally or... No, the listener, not you. Oh. I need you. <laughs> Not for much longer. We're, we're getting up there now. Yeah, once, once the show's done, I'll drown you in a river. You know? <laughs> I'm not even stabbed. Drowned. <laughs> well, we're going to get to it. It's a bit of a double whammy. Hmm. Mm. It's a... Uh, like, well, 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 we might as well jump on into it. This is a... Uh, we're just in the pure action territory now. This is yeah. Minute 77, uh, which opens with uh, some slow-mo. Uh, and it ends a minute later with some ninjas scrambling to get on their bikes and go. Um, go mo, go mo. <laughs> go oh, actually, bro. that is a thing, isn't it? Go motion. Hmm? I'm sure that's a thing. That's a movie thing. Go motion. Uh. Yes, it's a variety of stop motion which incorporates motion blur into each frame involving motion. It was co-developed by Industrial Light and Magic. I'm not going to read the whole wiki, but I was right. Go. Yeah. Oh, go motion. Isn't that how they do the Imperial Walkers and stuff? Oh, well, there you go. There. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well read the whole Wikipedia. We've got no notes for this. So like, <laughs> well, welcome you say to that, Wikipedia. I ended up taking loads, but I think it's mostly drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, like, even to get to that, this is like, oh, shirt's off. Like, not even shirt off, whole friggin' suit off. Within, uh, <laughs> within a couple of... Although we might as well start, though, from the very beginning. Because uh, we do get, of course, uh, the end, the slow, painful death of this ninja. Uh, as his the... innards fly out. <laughs> yeah. So we had the splatter on John's face, uh, and then let's see how long does this go for? <laughs> uh, they're just still dying, still dying. Yep, swords out, and ten seconds. Ten seconds are the death of this ninja, and that's not including how it started last minute as well. So oh yeah, another couple of, of seconds there. Yeah, it's probably three three seconds. Uh, the, how long that splatter took? Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, so just it's. It feels like this one, like the the emphasis on like the the close up, and like you know John's anger and stuff, makes it feel like this is really personal to him between him and this ninja. As if like Ooh. this feels like this would have been like the death blow between him and Jeff, you know, had that gone down that way. Uh, but no, it's just uh, again because this ninja also wasn't the one to to kill, well, quote unquote, kill Jim. Well, that's what um, I was about to say. If it was that ninja, that would have been quite a quite a cool moment, actually. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they could have done something like that. Ninja gets away, and then like there's a whole chase throughout the swamp between Mark doing his thing and John doing his thing, and then at the end they both find that ninja and they like they they double team him. Yeah, yeah. they go. They both turn into Jean Claude Van Damme and reenact the uh, <laughs> the the classic mid '90s film. Uh, double team. Was it called Double Team? Double Team. Yeah, I own it on Amazon Video. I oh. bought it because it's that good. Mm, that's double the one Team with... Minute. The Double Team, two minutes at a time, coming soon. That's him. That's Dennis Rodman, right? That one. Yeah. Him and... yeah. Like, so was like, I know there's one with two Van Dams. <laughs> and there's one with is, is that... Please don't tell me. I might be misremembering this. He doesn't do the movie version of the game Double Dragon, does he? Because I think Double Dragon was there was a movie version of that, but it had like Alyssa, it was like, like baby Alyssa Milano was in it. And okay, I think I'm pretty sure that was Double Dragon, right? I um, see. There's that many of these movies that are some, some fucking version of Double Dragon or something Dragon. They all sound and look the same. All the boxes in the shop when you're perusing the VHS, they all look the fucking same. Yeah, well, I remember though that the um, the Double Dragon thing, the thing I think of, Double Dragon, just double, 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 double jerk. Really. <laughs> uh, double Dragon. I've seen double four dragons. <laughs> uh, nineteen, about nineteen, ninety, ninety four. Jesus Christ! I yeah. thought it was like eighty six when it came out. Gee, Robert Patrick's in it as yeah. Koga Shuko. <laughs> oh, he's he's the main villain. He's got like a big long, big long bleached, uh, like flat top. Like, a, he looks like Guile, but, like, with a, a villain goatee, as I recall. Holy shit, right. I couldn't have been more wrong, but I'm happy, because this is amazing. I'd forgotten all of this. Yeah. Oh, no, Vanna it, White! Yeah, yeah, Vanna White's <laughs> in there. And as I recall, I was going to say, oh, it's almost like a like a weird prototype of the 
the the Mario movie because it's like oh it's all you know an adaptation of a game and it goes into all this weird subterranean world that's very mm. grimy and dirty and it doesn't feel like this is what people fans of the game would want and stuff. That's why I thought it was made in like 1986. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, no, oh, they're no. just ripping off the Mario. I guess maybe like the, the the game the games to film people were just like, oh, this is the, that's what the Mario people are doing. So we should start doing that too because clearly that's gonna be a huge success. <laughs> so we just base our movie on that one. <laughs> well, get get this. It's only three years after T2. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, uh, although I did just Google T two and it brought up Train Spotting two, which is something we've complained about many times. Yes, and then we and we'll do it again. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I shouldn't Google T two and be getting Train Spotting. I'm sorry. No, it is it is it is actively outrageous. But like that, that's uh, so many things though in the aftermath. Like many films, like I guess because you got Jurassic Park the next year. That's that incredibly stands up. But like, there's a lot of mid budget films that came out in the in the interim. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and you're just like when you when you remember the Terminator Two came out like <laughs> the, at the early '90s, and it still looks incredible. And then yeah. something like Double Dragon comes along, and you're like, "Look, we did we didn't have that money, okay? <laughs> we just had to make this thing." It's like, why does it look like it was made ten years before it was made? <laughs> to, it was to, be some fair, money. <laughs> to be fair, wasn't Terminator Two like the most expensive movie at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was like one a, of them, if not the. Yeah. And then, then you know, and then Jurassic Park. I'm sure it probably cost a couple of quid as well when they were making that. But yes, yeah. So yeah, I'm not going to hold that against Double Dragon. It's the fact that it was absolute shite. Yeah, it is absolutely <laughs> diabolical. <laughs> but but yeah, so if that was Double Dragon, and then there was the but what was the movie with two Van Dams? Let's see, Double Van Dam, Double Dam. <laughs> Double impact. That was the Double one. impact. Oh, my God. You know something? I think I might actually have that on Amazon as well. <laughs> I got loads of them. I got, like, Time Cop. I bought mm. everything. Uh, let's make sure that the Dennis Rodman. Yeah, this double. So he did two doubles. Yeah. He did He did double the double. Uh, double, man, yeah. double, baby. Yeah. Maybe he signed on for a double team thing. Like, oh, it's obviously a, a sequel to my hit film. <laughs> double <laughs> impact. <laughs> And then they're like, no, it's not, John. <laughs> How is. could you do that to him? Oh, Double Team is genuine. I know it's not good, but it's good, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I, I would recommend everybody watch it. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> After the stabbing comes the bit I mentioned at the beginning. Because, um, you know, you see a close-up of the guy's dying face. Well, his eyes, you know, he does have a ninja mask on. Mm. At least you got a good, you know, we get his eyes rather than like that guy Mark killed. <laughs> that last <laughs> one, which is a close-up of his... His death throws through his nose. His yeah. death nose. <laughs> death nose, baby. Uh, but this guy, I mean, yeah, you, you can see a lot of emotion, but he, he slowly collapses, falls face down in the river. Mm. Right. And to me, that's what seals his fate the most. Because <laughs> if he somehow, against all odds, survived this stabbing and slicing of his organs, which you can, weirder stuff's happened, you know. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. But he's going to drown. Because mm. he hasn't got the energy to move, and you can drown in the bath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, the um, I mean the stabbing. First of all, take a drink. Mm-hmm. I love the stabbing, <sighs> and then like it's uh, using the guy. It feels like he's kind of using him as like a cup holder or something. Because <laughs> John puts down his his sword, but like he's setting it into something. So the the guy's body is just right in front of him. He's like, all right, just. Shh, there you well, go. Th- this is a question I've I've written this down. When he slams the sword down. Does he stab it into the guy oh, he's or into the be. ground, right? Because if it's the guy, that's just rubbing salt into the wound, really. Yeah, yeah. Let me see, it cuts through him like butter as well. <laughs> this time, there's barely any effort to get through that. Because uh, location-wise, it's got. I think it's got to be the guy. And there's a slight noise as if, like, I think slamming it into the dirt wouldn't make that sound. Mm. Oh, no, I'm, I'm fairly certain it should, like... I'm just surprised they did, he didn't do more by kind of ah uh, like to just to, to make sure that you knew he was going into the guy, <laughs> yeah. but it is kind of like weirdly funny where it's just like big big epic stab, and then the next one's just like shh, it's like well, was he going through his skull or like where, where, where are you stabbing him now? He's got to keep his sword you know steady while he takes his top off. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, take a drink. Uh, <laughs> You're going to be hammered by the end of this episode. Let me tell you. It's, a, it's an aggressive derobing we got going on right here. <laughs> well, that's another question I've got. Why does he rip his top off? Is it because it's bloody? Is it for ease of movement? Is it because he's gone insane? Is it all of the above? I thought it was, it's a good question. That was a thing I was pondering myself. I was old, I would add in a, uh, another option because he does a little look around. 
uh, afterwards. And uh, I think he's just like, just in case there's any chicks watching. I just want to make sure that like I'm looking, <laughs> I look extra cool. Let's so, like, I think maybe it's it's just uh, he's got the red mist going on. It's just like, oh, it's on now, baby. And like, what he just yeah. knows to do is like, I don't care about anything anymore. Rip it. This, this thing's distracting me. I'm getting this <laughs> off, and I'm gonna kill everybody. Like, what? it's full on. Like he is going out to destroy. He's turning feral, basically. It's the same in the video game Doom. You pick up a, a berserk pack, mm. and when you get that. You can't use any weapons. You can only use your fists, but you're super strong. So you run around punching demons in the face and turning them into intestines and things. They just go... <laughs> 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 yeah, eyeballs coming out. Mm. <laughs> and it lasts, you know, like a little while. It's like a cool power-up. Yeah. Although you mentioned in Looking for Chicks, I'm just going to bring it up now. That kind of ties into the commentary track. Oh, it was one of the only- <laughs> Vincent Hurst was like, oh, he yeah. heard there were some chicks nearby. I was like, oh, wait, let's make sure they know I'm a, I'm a cool action movie star over here. Oh, we got laid. No, no. Um, they they mentioned, it's one of the only things in this, this minute's commentary, um, that this is all shot in a public park. <laughs> right, and, and the exact wording is that they secured the perimeter to keep grandmothers away. <laughs> I think they'd have a heart attack and they're like, ooh, a shirtless Vincent Hirsch. Oh. Well, it's what every grandmother wants to see. You know, mm. it brings some excitement into her life and her, uh, I was going to say golden years, I suppose. <laughs> Probably more than that. <laughs> huh? I feel like almost like a better film, though, of just like the grandmother see like the ninjas approaching and then they just like take up their walk and says, like, all right, buddy, let's go. And just start like, yeah. spinning around. <laughs> it's probably need the- ninja grandmas. Come on. I suppose there's nothing like this. Oh, there's bound to be some like Asian films that are like Ninja Grandma. Like mm. that seems like too lucrative an idea. Like I, just the, the, the whole. So you know, I'm sure there's been a million things like oh yeah, Ninja Grandpa, where it's like oh it's an old guy, an old man you would never assume was a ninja. That's not the same. No. Hmm. But then if you use Ninja Grandma, it's just like oh yeah, this is like this is this is a cut. But there's like a million ninja movies, so there's got someone's bound to have hit on it at some point. Off the top of my head. The closest I can think of, and I think the, the actress is not as old as she's portraying, but the, um, if I'm remembering, the wife of the landlord in Kung Fu Hustle. Mm, mm. You know, she's like a bit of an older woman. She's smoking a fag and she's got rollers in her hair and stuff. Uh, and she ends up doing a bunch of cool moves. Yeah. But I, I, I think the actress is quite a bit younger than the character. Mm. I want to see like an old woman. <laughs> I guess like the, the closest we'd actually get would be a uh, recent Oscar winner, everything, everywhere, all at once, which is yeah. kind of like, oh, Michelle, you know, is old enough to be a grandmother. And it is basically like ninja grandma. I think <laughs> that's the- part of the problem, though, is uh, we were talking um, off mic about how these days, you know, people look a lot younger. Mm-hmm. So Michelle, yeah, I still think, oh, yeah, she's attractive. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but... Technically, she she very well might be a grandma. Yeah. When I was yeah. a kid, a grandma looked about a hundred. Mm. They looked like they were about to die. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so someone out there, uh, if you'd like to uh, contribute to our Patreon uh, to fund Grandma Ninja, uh, we all like <laughs> starring Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> once we have uh, finished um, the, uh, the the Miami Connection novelization, uh, which is now becoming. So overwhelming. <laughs> that, I don't uh, think we can do it now. It's too big a project. I th- I'm sorry, John. Uh, Denis Villeneuve has already agreed to uh, direct <laughs> two films based on the Miami Connection <laughs> novelization. Fine, fine. We're doing it then. Okay. I told I you we shouldn't him. have invented a religion midway through. Okay. <laughs> I come out with all these like life-changing doctrines based on Mark's potential teachings that he doesn't mention in the movie. I might actually get genuinely, right, maybe I should get a tattoo that says only through the elimination of violence can we achieve world peace to commemorate mm. the finishing of the show. Oh, well, where would you get it, though? Ass. <laughs> no, it would have to be on the arm, right? And You'd have to get some sort of Miami Connection related thing around it, maybe. Mm. You have to do like the ultimate thing, like I have it, like get a, get a Brock Lesnar sword down your chest. <laughs> just get the writing down. There. And then just like it says, only through the elimination. Be like, why have you got a big sword in your chest? Like, well, only through the elimination of violence can we achieve Charles' yeah. peace. Like, I'll, I'll that's get a pretty these ninja violent swords. 
This is pretty. This is pretty violent, though. To have a ninja sword on your chest, like no, I'm I'm promoting the fact that do the elimination of violence. Exactly. You've got, you know, you can't, you can't just. Uh, I think I've said this before. You can't just want to live in a nice world. You've got to make the nice world. Right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> you got to go out there and kill those biker ninjas yourself. Yeah. You got to get it done. Much like uh, something of, you know, Denis Villeneuve that we've just been talking about off mic. You've got to bring the holy war. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of Miami Connection, just ends with, <laughs> with Mark starting a holy war against biker ninjas. I am the Kwisatz Satterach. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We've completely missed something. If he is stabbing the guy when he puts the sword down, that's another fucking drink, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. there you oh, go. Jesus Christ, there's more coming. I do. I, I like it though uh, in his his method of disrobing. Uh, again, this must have been like that was the the last remnants of that uh, of that shirt and jacket. Like yeah. this uh, all had to be a one take wonder. Otherwise, like, unless there was a guy there with like a generator and a hair dryer <laughs> ready to go <laughs> or something, cleaning it up in like three seconds. It's okay. It's okay. I'll get rid of all the leeches. Yeah, this actually very much reminded me of Samurai Jack. Hmm. Um, because I love Samurai Jack, you know, masterpiece of '90s animation, and then they they, they recently concluded it there, uh, about a, three or four years ago. With oh, yeah, um, yeah. they brought it back for one more season, amazing, absolutely amazing stuff. But like this is kind of like um, the vibe, because you know, I love Samurai Jack is that it's it's mostly like there's great character work in there, great dialogue and stuff too, and they have loads of comedy and things like that. But some episodes, it's just like here's some beautiful animation. That's mostly just like him killing people. That's all <laughs> like, right. That's all you need, right? But there'll usually be a thing of like, he'll be getting attacked by like five robots and then 10 robots. And there'll be a bit where he's just like, Aah! and then we'll rip off the top of his shirt and take out the sword because he's got a magic sword. Yay. And then the rest of it will just be like him massacring usually robots because they, you know, it's it a kid show. <laughs> so they could, if they got a new season though, not a kid show at all was one of the big things about it where it's just like, holy Christ, this is intense now. Oh, did they not give a shit in that one? I think that one was just like, people who watched this back in the day, they're all in their 30s now. So we don't have to hold anything back. It was on Adult Swim as well. And I think it aired at like one in the morning. So they're just like, yeah, you watch it. It's like the amount of times where it's genuinely like the most tense thing you've ever seen because he's getting <laughs> messed up <laughs> a lot. And it's so dark and twisted and stuff. Although, not to get any spoilers though, it ends in such a note that's just like, oh. And apparently they did a computer game tie-in what actually had a happier ending, and now people, a lot of the fans have just edited in the the game ending <laughs> over the last episode. I've gone, that's oh, the ending. Like, like literally edited it in, like yeah, a, a fan edit. Fan edits going around, or, or, or just encouraging people, like, don't watch the last 10 minutes of the final episode. Just put on this thing on YouTube instead, because that's the ending you want. Which is, and it's true. Like, it's just like, yeah, I, I would agree. That That is a better ending. You should They should have done that, because they're just like, I think they were so... The guy that makes it, G- uh, Gendy Tarkovsky. Yeah. If you watch his stuff, he really, really loves making his characters miserable. <laughs> like, <laughs> he will put people through the goddamn ringer. So he did that show Primal about the, the T-Rex hanging out with the caveman. Oh, yeah. Uh, great show as well. But it's usually just about, like, yeah, the T-Rex and this this primeval guy, uh, or primal guy, just getting wrecked. Because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's set in, like, a harsh, cruel world. Where things are attacking you all the time. So like and, the real world, basically. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, how can I mess up this caveman today? <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> and you makes me feel really, really empathize with him. And then like, yeah, uh, now you're going to find out how we, you know, almost got his jaw ripped off. <laughs> you're like, God damn it, man, leave him alone. It sounds great. Yeah. But yeah, this really, uh, if they had the budget and, and like the amount of people, like I can imagine John's, you know, tearing the, tearing the jacket off and taking up the sword been followed by a Samurai Jack-esque, like him killing 50 people in a row. And just at the end of it, been like fast cutting of the blade just up near the camera and ding, 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 ding. And then eventually it would end with him like solemnly sitting atop of a pile of bodies or something. But uh, I think he's almost preempt. He's like, John's almost jumping the gun here by being like, come on, let's go. So I don't know if there's that many ninjas left, really. I don't know how many they had in the first place. Well, I don't think it's like an army they've got. Like, it's, uh, I think they might have got through enough of them. Already. I thought there was barely any. But they, they seem to just keep coming one at a time. Like, But they seem to just be endless. Why? The one confusing thing 
at this point, if I was the ninjas, okay, this has all gone off the rails, mm. but you've potentially taken down one of their top guys. Yeah. I'd I'd retreat. Mm. I don't think that's a defeat. If you report back to Yoshito, we've taken out Jim. <laughs> I think that would be seen as, oh, great, we've struck a blow. Mm. I would think, though, like, Yoshito was also watching the film. And he's just like, Jim, not Jim. I don't want you to kill him. <laughs> he's, the, he's the good one. Why have you done that? <laughs> you idiot. He was the most talented one. <laughs> I he was to Dragon the others. <laughs> I was hoping he was going to go solo. God damn it. <laughs> I had a contract lined up and everything. Oh. Yeah. It's like he was going to meet his father. What the hell? I told you to go to the house and get the other ones. I was like, oh, oh. Oh, no, I don't think Jim's going to meet his father. Oh, is his father's going to be there waiting for him? Oh, no, he was waiting for that his entire life. It's so tragic. Oh. Why did you do it? It's like, you told us to. It's like, not, not him, anybody but Jim. Maybe that's why they don't want to retreat. They, they realize the error of their ways. They're like, look, we have to just fight to the end now. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that will appease Yoshito is if we finish the job. Mm. So but we're going back in the previous minutes, though, because did, they did actually build up that there was like a fleet coming. But like, and how many of the kills so far? I guess maybe maybe I'm exaggerating in my own head. Maybe they've only killed like three ninjas, and there potentially still could be like like three twenty ninjas. more around. But it did kind of the vibe I'm kind of getting this is like there's no because you you don't see that. I guess, well, maybe they're ninjas, so you don't see them. But no. um, and also it's probably they only had like three or four actors and it's just and it's the same guy that they're killing over and over <laughs> uh, but yeah i don't know if it's going to be uh all that you know it's going to result in them having to take on like 20 guys at once uh, but it's, it's building up to feel that way that that's that, that's the vibe they want to portray that like it yeah absolutely is that's that's the impression we're getting from it mm. and um i mean you, you've mentioned you know uh john looking around everywhere like manically so he's doing that. He's looking for more people to kill. And then um, Mark pops back up into the fray, doesn't he? Running mm. down the embankment and jumping into the lake. Yeah, yeah. Sword in hand. He's also looking for more slicing to do. They're, they're, they're just both bloodthirsty at this point. I don't blame them, mm. to be honest. They've been driven to this. You know, the ninjas drew first blood. Yeah. <laughs> Which they did. They did. It, it is Rambo. I know we brought it up like last minute, maybe. I mean, then then Yoshido could be like, Jeff was the first blood. You know, that was. But then they drew. They Like, I know they didn't kill uh, Angelo. They didn't kill Tom. No, they were like, planning to, though. But because they did draw his blood. Like, he was bleeding. Like, it was yeah. a disappointing amount of, like, bleeding. He, was, he didn't look like he was roughed all up, up that all up. But I think he had, like, a blood trickle coming out as well. That's the first blood. Yeah, um, and maybe, you know, we've speculated, maybe Mark's had a really tough time in Korea. Yeah. Maybe he was part of the, I was going to say the Korean War, would it have ended? Wow, well, this is bringing up a difficult thing. How old's the character supposed to be? Yeah, if you told me he was supposed to be like 45, I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, I, I mean, buy it. Technically, I mean, the Korean War did end in the 50s, but mm. it's one of those things where, where it, also technically, it's still going on, I believe. Yeah. It's one of those where they never it's... actually... In my mind, treaty. that war is still going on, John. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just the war. So, you know, he, he could have been all kinds of stuff going on. And there's, there's all kinds of problems over there. Maybe it's like Rambo. He's he's triggered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. past, he's now, he's living in his mind in the past. He's stuck in the jungle. He has to fight his way through. But I'm also totally on his side. They've been driven to it. They were pushed mm. to this. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that, that, that works in that context for Mark, if not the Korean War, just whatever weird ninja fights he was in over yeah. there. And then I'm sticking with my headcanon for John, where it's just like, no, he was previously part of a street gang. Yeah. And he tried to get up and try to get his, you know, pull up his bootstraps and get his life straight. And he was like, yep. Like, and that's why he's so quick to go feral. Mm-hmm. It's just like, yep, all you need to do was like tip over this guy. And then, yeah, he could just go, he can go at any given second. And that's why it's just like, that's the reason for the slow-mo is to be emphasize his emphasis, to emphasize his <laughs> his turn to uh, to the dark side, his return back to his old yeah, ways. Yeah, I love that. And it would also explain, like, I'm not saying he looks old or anything. He looks great. Mm. But, he, you know, he looks a little bit older than your normal uh, university student. Yeah, it could also explain, you know, why he's a mature student at university because he he didn't get the chance to go originally because he was, you know, a street tough. He was yeah. living that kind of a life. 
Oh, totally. 100%. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, I'm finally, I'm finally going back. And he had to finish his high school degree. That's mm-hmm. the Miami Connection prequel. Will be uh, Mark oh Cavendish. Oh, maybe that's what like that's how they that's how they met. It was like John had to go back in like in, in his twenties had to go into high school to finish getting his like you know his secondary school education. Incredible. And then Mark was working there as like a janitor, or yes! like or, or maybe he was like a like a I don't know like a te- like some kind of teacher or something. And then like oh no, no, no I, I kind of like janitor though because then they're both the kind of down and outs, and they're like everyone's picking on John because he's like the big dopey. Like, like oh that loser couldn't even pass high school, blah, 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 blah. but he he wants to go and destroy them because that's his way. That like he was he's been with the, he's been with Jeff's gang for so long. Uh, but now he shaved his beard. No one even recognizes him anymore. Yes. <laughs> and then, like, but he's just trying to hold back. And then it's just like, yeah, the, the quiet, solemn, very serene janitor is just like, no, I can teach you the way. And then, uh, and then, yeah, at the end of the movie, the boat, they both decide to go to university. Uh, and then they just like, the the ending scene is then like putting up a uh, like a flyer for like you know housemates wanted or something like that and it's like, oh, oh that would be such a good oh my god well now we've got another project to work on <laughs> there's of course has to be a big scene at the prom because there's always got to, there's a high school movie there's got to be a prom and of course the prom band like used to see in the back it's just like hidden behind everybody else and like really waiting for his moment in the sun as a mulletless tom with like no oh. mustache or anything, and he's just like, uh, and he's just like, but guys, can I go out and like rage and tear my shirt off and stuff, and just like really start? Jack- I got a really cool guitar solo. Like, he's getting that back, Tom. Nobody wants to see you. <laughs> you know the rest of the band. Like you could have Dexy in the group too. Oh, there you go. Perfect. But that, the Dexy would be the guy who'd grind them down. Would be like, yeah. the, get out of here, loser. You're just filling in because like Mike broke his wrist or whatever. <laughs> this is this this needs to be a TV show rather than a movie. Yeah. Like we've said, Cobra Kai guys before. This is it, guys. You this gotta get it. on this thing. We've got it. We've got it. It's perfect. Mm. Holy shit! And they can have a run in with ninjas, and that can establish <laughs> why they already hate ninjas. Mm. Oh yeah, be like a you can do a Karate Kid, where it's just like yeah, the Halloween. Like, <laughs> like Dexy and his crew were all dressed up as ninjas, and they were picking yeah. on. <laughs> they were picking on John or something. Oh yes, yes, yes! Holy I think, shit! I'd have to try to work in like where everyone else would fit. <laughs> You'd have to get a gym too at some point. We'll like. figure it. You know what? We we keep saying this almost as a joke, but we'll see what we feel like at the end of this. Maybe we'll maybe we'll come up with something. We'll see. We'll see. We have a lot of things going on though. Okay, we're busy people, so mm. don't don't hold your breath. Okay, no. that's what I wanted wanted to be like. Do you think Jim would he be like? The overachieved would he be like the class valedictorian and every everybody really loves Jim <laughs> and stuff and they're like oh no we like, they wish they could hang out with Jim but he's like oh he's too cool Ooh. for them or something or just do a little a little twist on it or something like that yeah but, yeah because the obvious thing would be to make him a bit of a dork and a nerd and maybe people make fun of him yeah yeah but that's that's obvious mm. yeah and then you could have like I don't know, the beginnings of the romance or something between like you know. Uh, Tom's having to keep his head down or John's having to keep his head down in the school because he's obviously escaped from the gang and then like this cool kind of punk rock chick comes in who's like really surly and stuff but they find out it's actually Jane mm. and she's like yeah really on the wrong side of the tracks and stuff and like her parents only died pretty recently and stuff and then like the, the John's interested in her but then he discovers that her brother's Jeff, and he has to. I thought like, maybe now we're tripping over the, the the already established lore in that like they only meets Jeff at the start of the movie or something. But... Doesn't matter. We can we can figure it out. Okay, yeah. we can make it make sense. There's been weirder stuff that's happened. I mean, look mm. at half of these Star Wars shows. Obi Wan's hanging out with Leia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, there you go. Yeah. And he clearly hadn't met her. He's like, <laughs> in someone <the> movie. <laughs> get Flea on the phone. I want him <laughs> to play. Our Jeff. I think he's going <laughs> to flee for Jeff. That's it. Hashtag flee for Jeff. Yeah, throw up that hashtag. Are they still doing... Who even uses that fucking app? I don't, I don't know. know. If we could somehow the last us a chance to make ourselves relevant on uh, Twitter, <laughs> we'll be like, if we can get hashtag flee for Jeff <laughs> trending. Well, it's I'd better be than happy. the only other way you can get big, which is by being like a turf or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to do that. That's like what we did, though, and then at the end it was just like, well, the, your, your fellow turf is not so wavy gravy after uh. all. 
<laughs> and taking off all the stuff. Like we all we were doing was trying to finance a Miami Connection prequel movie <laughs> starring Flea. That's right, Graham Linehan. We got one over <laughs> on you. We got you to write it for us. <laughs> But you last, you, you 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 reunited me with my wife. She still hates you, Graham. You just paid her to act. We paid her to act along. It'd be worth it. <laughs> and oh. all this time, we've been smoking harmless tobacco. <laughs> That's legitimately one of my favourite Simpsons moments of all time. <laughs> it's like so he's so active for Mister Burns in that moment too. <laughs> Like, it doesn't seem like it was all that long ago, but it's like, yeah, he's, he's, he probably got into that. Like, usually oh, yeah. he's too lazy to do anything. <laughs> well, when it's taken down hippies, he gets a burst of energy. Yeah. But, but um, um, speaking of bursts of energy, uh, we get something I really like here, actually. When um, I can get the exact second, if you, although, to be honest, there's probably no need. It's when <laughs> Mark is running, you know, he's come down the embankment, he runs towards the camera. Mm. Um, so it, it's around. Here we go, seconds or 26, 27. Right, we get water splashes on the camera. Oh, yeah. And, you know, these days, that would be seen as like pretty gritty, real mm. filmmaking. Whereas in this, I think it's just an accident. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. I like it, you know. Mm. Well, like, well there's, a, there's a divide with people, isn't there? I like it. Some people say it takes you out of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it sort of destroys your suspension of disbelief. Mm. Video games were doing it for quite a while. Like uh, I think Gears of War would do it, blood and and stuff like that. Mm. No, I, I guess yeah, it's a, it's proper. Like it's reminding you that yeah, that there's a camera there. <laughs> it's just the thing. So like yeah, when you're, but um, well, I, I never found it all that much distracting. Yeah, I always uh, quite enjoy it. I mean, there are times where it's silly, but I, I don't know. It works in this. It adds to the I frantic mean, was... kind of nature of what Mark's doing. I mean, there was a like just just last minute ingenious use of it where they splashed water on the lens as he was slashing the guy, so you yes. didn't have to see the contacts. It was like that. That was in, you know the ingenuity there. It was like, oh, that's pretty impressive. But I like um, it. yeah, I'm yeah. into it. Yeah, I'm no. Uh, although again, having now like particularly when that guy John killed fell in the water and you saw how brown it was, that water is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm thinking, like, the reason that these guys haven't encountered any, like, gators or anything, because they are in Florida, after all, <laughs> like, is that, oh, the gators don't live in that water. <laughs> like, it's too damn dirty. So. Hey, I think they live everywhere. Even in the dirt, they don't care. Uh. They don't care. Well, That's you know what? This... We're saying it's dirty. It might not be, because if you remember, like, if you go down to the River Mersey here, mm. it looks pretty filthy. Yeah. Apparently, it's not. <laughs> Apparently it's like the it's like what do you call it? Like That's just like the mayor. The mayor has just come out and like you might think it looks dirty, but I can tell you, <laughs> I think you'll find <laughs> city official uh, or official city stance on it is that it's clean water. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's not absolutely disgusting. Mm. It's okay because um, yeah. it's it's to do with the mud and the silt that makes up the you know the the I was gonna say the ground. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could be, yeah, the, the faming a very reputable uh, yeah. Floridian park uh, here by saying, like, oh, it looks looks absolutely, <laughs> it could be like, no, it's just very shallow water, so there's a lot, of, and they're a bit in it, so they've kicked up a lot of soil and stuff underneath, and that's why it all looks, you know, it looks that brown on the top. Yeah, so watch your words. <laughs> well, but um, I have to say, too, I, I did discover um, just the, this past week, uh, that just this past week, um Florida has now begun uh, a new tradition they're trying to get going called uh, the the Florida Man Games. Right. Okay. I'm already into this because <laughs> you know, as you know, that uh, the inter- the classic internet meme about the Flo- you know Florida Man been at like a lot of uh, a lot of headlines about like crazy, crazy, crazy crap that goes on in Florida, such as like people you know driving through. Burger King, Burger King drive-throughs with a gator in the the seat next yeah. to them, and that kind of thing. Or like, well, in like, fact, it's that famous. I mean, there's a, there's a drag queen just called Florida Man. Really? <laughs> like, That's amazing. I just love it. You don't don't add anything else. No notes. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's it's like um, a discovery. Because I thought like, oh, because everyone was like, oh, only in Florida, that kind of thing. Uh, I was just like, I'm pretty sure like other just anywhere you go, you usually got crazy crap happening. The reason they talk about so much in Florida is that uh, they're under something called the Sunshine Laws, 
which is basically that all their criminal records are public record, so anyone can go and look at them. And oh. so a lot of, like, journalists and newspapers that are just like, we haven't got, nothing's happening today. We need to go find something. They can just go into like the, the the like the criminal records of Florida and go yoink and pull that out. Whereas in other states, it might be like, no, no, that needs to go to trial. That needs to go through this, that, and the other. You can't just you yeah. can't do, pull a, a whole story on that. But because of that, yeah, the the Florida man has become a proper infamous meme. And now there is uh, the Florida man games, which just happened the other week. Looks very low budget, to be fair, but you know. So is Miami Connection. <laughs> so how dare you? <laughs> uh, and um, it's host. It was hosted by a guy who now I feel like, and we've got a couple of minutes left, John. We could still reach out to him. Um, a guy called uh, OMG. It's Wix. I think he just goes by Wix. Uh, no, and, you have to call him OMG. It's Wix. That's amazing. Uh, and he's uh, seems he seems like a cool guy, like a uh, very laid back black guy, long dreadlocks, stuff like this. But his whole shtick is that he's a Florida guy. And he just, like, all his, he has, um, his catchphrase apparently is flip phone, flip phone, flip, <laughs> flip phone, activate. Flip phone, activate. Like yeah, that. Yeah, that. that. Apparently, like, at the Florida Demand Games, instead of saying, like, three, two, one, or anything like that, he'd just go, flip phone, activate, and then the thing would start. Uh, but he, like, all, it's, he's, apparently he's big on TikTok. And all his whole shtick is, like, to be fair, it's, it's not stick I particularly like because it's all just sort of like, oh, in Florida is so crazy. Like if you're you if you're if you learn to drive in Florida, like all our all our speed limits are just like suggested. It's so crazy here, and you know, all this like really tra- all very generic crazy things happening. Yeah, but he's just like only in Florida. <laughs> and you're like, eh, crazy stuff happens everywhere, man. Like it's not but, not to the same level by the sound of it, though. I don't know. It seems like an extra weird place. <laughs> but we could. I don't know. I don't know how. It's. I got the vibe. He's quite big. Like I had never heard of him, but apparently, like on, I, I'm not on TikTok, so maybe on TikTok he's like millions and millions and millions of followers. Um, but like, it could be like a a, celeb, a final celeb guest. Um, because we could try to get OMG it's Wix to be like, well, you have to talk about Floridian classic. I'm into uh, Miami, it. I'm Miami into connection. It. But yeah, they had some. So they had several games, and all of them. It all looked like people who were having good fun. They all also kind of looked like they were there on January 11th. Like they had that kind of, <laughs> or they looked like the guys that Yoshido was hanging with, out with at that bar, like you know, 20, 20 episodes or so ago. Uh, or Vader. They all of them look like Vader in this movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, they had challenges such as uh, the eat the butt challenge. Uh, 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 I mean, people are into that now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it says, it, it's, uh, it says on the official site here, calm down. We're talking about competitors finishing their pork butt platter. Oh, uh, yeah, the sure. Fastest, uh, yeah. Uh, apparently, they had a weaponized pool noodle duel, um, which is supposed to be a big thing, like where they inflated a, an inflatable pool. And then it was a bit like gladiators, actually, like that we were just talking about the other, the other week. Uh, so much so that I believe, yeah, it says at the way at the bottom here, the judges were Dan Nitro Clark. <laughs> and Laurie Ice Fetrick, who were previously American Gladiators. So, oh, okay, okay, uh, cool. I guess, um, they, they, I mean, they're nothing on our Gladiators, but still. No, if, ours are the proper ones. <laughs> if, they, if they flew Saber over there, then, 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 then <laughs> we all would have known about this. But, I saw uh, someone uh, dissing Saber the other day online going, she moves around too much. Why doesn't she stay still? <laughs> and I just said she can do whatever she wants. <laughs> what do you do when, like, when, when she moves like that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're guessing to some really like, like, you know, they had like instead of like a bucking bronco, they had a bucking gator. Like uh, you know, amazing. Uh, there's the evading arrest obstacle course, wherein uh, apparently uh, you they set up a whole thing to look like a bunch of like shops and different sort of things, and then you have to like just run away from the police. Uh, <laughs> and they actually got for security in actual police officers. And then apparently those actual police officers just decided to take part in that game. So you were uh. genuinely getting placed. You're genuinely getting chased by genuine police officers. Um, and yeah, there was a whole thing with like the yeah the weaponized pool noodle duel was in an inflatable pool, but someone slashed it. And then the word was all going out that apparently it was someone with New York plates, and everyone was on the hunt for the. It sounded like things were could have turned very south very quickly <laughs> if they were just on the hunt for New Yorkers. Um, yeah, that seems uh, like you need to stop that. You need to nip that in the bud, you know. Yeah, there was a category five cash grab where they 
uh, sort of simulated a hurricane and then basically turned it into the Crystal Dome from <gasps> the end of uh, the Crystal Maze where um, people were just sort of like having to grab as many tokens out of the air as they possibly could. But those tokens were actual like they weren't actual money, but like that was, you know, uh, and then apparently the guy like, there was a, a, a guy there hosting, not Wix. He, he, he didn't do that part. But he said, like, yeah, whatever you people collect in the fake money, I will match in actual money. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then he didn't realize that there were 20s in there. And so it was, like, well over $7,000. And he was, apparently at the end he was really just like, <sighs> like he, he, did, he thought maybe he had to shell out a couple hundred bucks or something. It was all, it was all ones and fives or something. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yes, yeah, so we got a catalytic converter, two bikes, and a handful of copper pipes race against time. Where you're supposed to, uh, it's basically you have to go in and steal a lot of copper wiring, and then <laughs> like try to, again try to evade capture, but you have to like hold it on a bicycle while you're zooming through all this stuff. And it's then like whole, Takeshi's Castle. It is, yeah, it's very like Takeshi's Castle. And then someone said like, at one point you had to also pick up another bicycle because apparently a very common sight in Florida is seeing people going around with two bicycles. What? And that's supposed to be an indication that, like, oh, that person's stolen a bike. <laughs> like, they've oh. stolen a bike, and now they're trying to flee with it. Uh, instead of just riding that bike, they have their own bike. <laughs> so just going around with two bicycles at the same time, the most conspicuous thing in the world, basically. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, like, yeah, little things like Florida Sumo, where people are just putting, like, um, like you know, rubber rubber like pool rings in the shape of alligators around their around their waists oh, okay, and then, okay and use that yeah. to sort of push each other yeah and then just going into full on sumo fights and like yeah apparently floor the uh, all the reports said everyone had a lovely time uh there was no kicking off or anything like that and uh yeah the florida man games now going to be uh, a, 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 an annual tradition so we've got uh, to attend we have to i think we have to i was stunned going through all that not one indication the people were going to celebrate miami connection uh, oh. this like this it's finest export Exactly. Well, we can we can go and help. We'll 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 help them touch it up, and we'll report live from the scene, and we'll do it like late nineties, early two thousands, you know, like shock TV. We'll be like, mm. we'll get all the chicks to take their tops off. One hundred percent. And then we'll just make sure that Saber is coming uh, coming over as well. <laughs> I mean, that's it's totally of, us. We could be bros, right? Yeah. It's like it's because of all the swords. We need to have saber there. That's a, that, that, yeah, that's, that's the saber reason. Saber sword. There you fucking go, right there. We could do like a um, what do they call you know the 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 Star Wars guys who are like um, really in the stormtroopering and they like they call the oh the the five hundred and first legion or whatever they are. Yeah, and they do big marches and stuff as stormtroopers. Which, we which could, is a weird message, really, if you think about it. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine some people like. Might find that terrifying, like genuinely. Like yeah, if you, you're not meant to like the stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah, and also I think you were like a, you know, certain people in America of a certain age who came over from other countries might be like, I've seen stormtroopers in real life, and uh, I don't want to see them again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, not those stormtroopers, but a, a, an earlier iteration of stormtroopers that were very real. <laughs> not those uh, stormtroopers, the one at the bottom. <laughs> But we could try to yeah, we get as many people as we can to dress up as uh, biker ninjas, and we could just have like the yeah the the ride of the the Miami Connection First Division or whatever. Yes, like that. right. We're going, listeners. Get on our Patreon uh, mm -hmm. to help fund our trip. Yeah, yeah. We had the uh, the you know our, our attempts to get the Coolio cameo going over in the uh, oh. Batman. It tragically fell short, but that was only because Coolio died. All right, if that he wasn't died. Fault. It would have been fine. We would have, oh, you'd be like a co host at this point in that show if we'd, if we'd been able to smooth Coolio. If we I had got him on, for if we had got him on, we could have saved his life, John. We could have done it. Like I like to think that. You know, I don't yeah. think too highly of myself, but I do think I am a bit of a lifesaver. Yeah. Not that I think we would have done, but just got a butterfly effect kind yeah, of way, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, but yeah, so I just I discovered this just the. Um, just the other day, I was like, "Oh, the Florida, the Florida Man Games. This feels like a thing we should be on." And then I was just more outraged that they just weren't really doing anything to celebrate Miami Connection. Oh. Although maybe you should go through. I might try to pull up like some social media photos and stuff of the actual event because people are dressed up and stuff. I think if you comb through, someone there's bound to be a Dragon Sound T-shirt in there or something. You'd like, fucking hope so. 
they should have been getting Dragon Sound to play it. Like they should have been like the music and stuff. Like mm-hmm. we, well, we, we no, we definitely have to get onto these people and be like, look, <laughs> what are never, you doing? We've never been to America, let alone Florida, but we're here to tell you how to run your festival. All right. Maybe they'll fly us out. We could do. It's like we've spent. <laughs> 77 hours now <laughs> talking about the ins and outs of Miami Connection. Uh, and we've got like Denis Villeneuve and Flea attached to do an adaptation. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to say they've signed. They're attached. They're attached. They're in talks. <laughs> <laughs> That's and the now, way you get around it every time. <laughs> they're in talks in that we've talked about it. <laughs> they're either doing an adaptation of our novelization or creating an entire prequel TV show where... Oh, they've never heard of us. But that, that, leave that one. On what That'd be amazing if Denis Villeneuve was signed up to like direct like a teen drama for, like, <laughs> for Netflix or something. He's like, well, I didn't think my career was going this way either, but here we are. <laughs> we'll sucker him into it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we just need you to do the pilot to set the tone, Denis. And then like, oh, by the way, we forgot to hire any other directors. I guess you're doing the whole thing. I think that might be the longest tangent ever. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was literally like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, so, there's, there's not much happening. Where, where are we? Oh, okay. So you see, so you see a couple more ninjas come up on Mark. You know, looking around as they sneak about. Uh, they're they're either looking for Mark or John or a place to escape. Maybe we mm. don't know. We don't know. It doesn't matter because this is one of the coolest bits. As they loudly creep through the river, splashing everywhere, kind of defeats mm. the point of being a ninja. Mark pops up from underwater. That's right, yeah. He's laying flat in a shallow river, pops up, kills them one slash each. Bam, bam. I guess maybe Mark has, you know, he's been in Florida long enough and he sees the water. He's like, he's thinking gator. That's he's like, it. It's a gator tactic, right? He's like, how would how an ally? Uh, by, maybe he's run into the, the, the ninja gator squad that's out yeah. there. Yeah. Like, Maybe that's why he's like, we gotta get out of here quickly because the, the the gators are around. <laughs> and like, oh, you mean Alex? Like, no, I mean the Ninja Gator Squad. Like, oh. we don't we have more than just biker ninjas here, you know. Dude, this much worse. Mm-hmm. That's what you say oh, for the sequel. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, people no, will be like, are they ninjas who dress up like alligators, or are they alligators that dress up like ninjas? And Mark could just be like, worse. Much just, worse. <laughs> just just leave it at that. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> that's the kind of thing that you're just like that's that, that, that's you know the, that's uh, Obi-Wan talking about the Clone Wars at yeah. the start of A New Hope you know it's like oh that's the ambiguity leaving people people's imaginations will fill that in so much better than anything we could come up with quite frankly. also with that not to go off on a mad tangent again but is it just me or when you hear that as a kid you thought oh it's like a war of clones against clones yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no actual people involved. It's like, it's almost like chess for the humans, mm. sending oh, their <laughs> pawn clones to fight each other. I was more th- thinking of like, oh yeah, they were just cloning people like crazy, and there was like, I was kind of thinking like, oh, so there'll be a, there would have been two Obi Wans going around, and like ah, he had to fight yeah. himself or something, or like getting really goofy with it. And they're like, no, it was just like, a legion of clone, what cloning one guy. That was it. That was the whole... Like, yeah, know. very disappointing. But then, as we know, Luke's dad was a navigator on a spice freighter. So mm. he wasn't part <laughs> of the Clone Wars. That was the... Um, uh, of course, though, this will again be part of the novelization where we will have a side tangent talking about the uh, the Gator King of the Ninja <laughs> Squad. And I'll have a whole thing. Maybe Mark goes like, into the reeds and like besieges him for help or something but then he talks about a time where him and dragon sounds like because dragons and ninja dragons and gators wouldn't get on you know they'd be mm. natural enemies and stuff like because gator is like a lizard of the water and dragons are ninjas of fire so you see it does, oh, like, it was, uh, except asia i've brought this up before asian dragons are water based ah. creatures not fire based creatures like western ones that's gonna be a whole big thing where there'll be a rivalry between the two and at the end, Mark would be revealed as being like, no, I'm like the water dragon. Yeah. And it'd be like, he, he could walk between worlds and then like the Gator King would have to be like, oh, you know, I take off my Gator, my, my tooth made crown or whatever he's wearing. <laughs> I think surely though, ultimately, John should become the fire dragon. Mm, mm. And then it's the union of the houses. <laughs> ah, they kind of create a sort of lukewarm water. <laughs> like in the- like Derek Smalls over here. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. 
We should, really, we should really, Ben should really be taking notes to actually start writing this book at some point. I know we're gonna to have to listen back through our own show, people, because I've forgotten ninety nine percent. Because this isn't stuff we write in the notes. This is no, all off the top of our. Head. If this is stuff that we're just coming up with now, imagine how good the, the, the actual book would be. Exactly right. You know, if we sit down, you you watch. We'll sit down in in, in our writers' room together and just be like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I guess he uh, like has a girlfriend <laughs> no that's stupid because <laughs> <laughs> i i've never sat and written anything i imagine on the spot i would be terrible mm. actually no it's the opposite on the spot i'm fine yeah because this is on the spot it's it's <laughs> actually putting in the effort is is the difficult thing oh. um but you know i said he slashes those two people so you know what that means two drinks people mm. oh, geez, mm. this, oh, fucking hell hang on and I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll give the movie a little bit of a benefit of the doubt in that uh, we do know that um, Yoshido's had to blend squads, mm. so he has Jeff's old like dunderhead biker crew and his like elite ninjas. But does he put I, them in the ninja garb? I think he, I, I, I'm using that as an excuse as to why these guys are just splashing around. Those are like <laughs> Jeff's old guys, or they could be like friggin' Dexies. Like those two guys are hanging out with yeah. Dexie. Like I was like, yep, that's them. <laughs> and, uh, although I'm sure you probably do see them. I keep thinking we've seen the last of Dexy, and he st- he keeps coming back. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I'm gonna if, if we don't see him again, I'm gonna be devastated because it's like, no, we have to get one one last go around. Then you have to see him again, you know. Um, but the uh, no, he definitely wouldn't because then if he's if Mark slashed him, there would be a final like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That, I want that to be my final words. If I'm ever dying and you're around. Uh, remind me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John, remember what to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, you son of a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then again, during the big prom scene in the, the prequel TV show, there has to be a bit of like a, a clean cut, a clean shaven Dexy seeing Jeff in the distance, like storming around looking for like, you know, John who's run away from the gang. And then when he sees the beard, he's like, oh, that son of a bitch is looking cool. <laughs> or like he does, he, he can never think of a good insult. And then at one point he just overhears Jeff calling someone like shouting out, like, I want that son of a bitch, John, right here right now. <laughs> and it's like his mind is blown like, oh, that beard. And what did he, what did he call him? <laughs> I think he called him a son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. I like I it. I like it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he gets it, baby. <laughs> um, do you think we can hold off doing the the final episode of Miami Minutes until the next Florida Man games, and we can do it live in front of the whole crowd? Holy so. shit! Yeah, you know what? <laughs> if it's on the table, I'll do it. If you're listening, organizers of Florida Man games, get us on for the finale. We will do it live. Mm-mm. Get us and Wix. Get them back. You know? Yeah, we'll do it. Um. Yeah. So you mentioned Mark, you know, laying flat. Um, and it made me think, like, is that is that an a- alligator tactic? I think it might be. Listeners, correct me if I'm wrong, because we haven't got alligators here, so I'm going off, like, media and stuff. But I, I seem to recall them being very sneaky like that. Like, they can go really low and quiet mm, mm. and things. So it is a bit alligatory. It's a bit Floridary. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I, mean, I like it. These guys are suckers. They fell for one of the classic blunders. Mm. Oh, maybe that because like they're uh, maybe they're out of state ninjas. <laughs> They've been ah. paying, like Yoshido's for like if it's not Dexy's guys or one of you know Jeff's Thunderheads, uh, these will be like oh no we had to bring in our you know guys straight from you know across the way kind of thing. It's like no they ah, don't know the, the same. Fun. It's not the same. You know if you can't get homegrown ninjas, store bought is not fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, barefoot Contessa. It doesn't work mm. outside the realms of cooking. No, uh, it's a shame they didn't do like a little, um, like they could do. They could have done it with John because like Mark is obviously like, well, he's you know, uh, like you could you always say, oh, you know, the fact that he's you know he's Asian is like, oh, you know, he obviously comes from somewhere else. It's like you could always say, Mark, oh no, he was he was raised in Florida until you hear him talking, and it's like, no, no, he clearly comes from. <laughs> <laughs> he's they could, they could still say he is. Tommy was over, didn't stop. <laughs> that's, I guess that's true, but like. Um, but with with John, you could have done a thing like, no, no, I, I was born and raised in these swamps. Now you're on my turf or something. Oh, and yeah. Have it, have it be that like, oh, you know, maybe it even be like Mark's out of his element. He's like, I don't know how to like, I'm all this, un, you know, wet, unstable terrain. I'm wearing this, 
bright orangey red t-shirt. Like I'm a sitting duck and then John been like, I'll take care of this, Mark. And then been like, that, <laughs> this boy is a swamp boy. He came. A swamp a boy. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Swamp boy. The adventurers of Swamp Boy. <laughs> Featuring John. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the when we do the uh, prequel TV show, we have to get Baltimore in to do a cover of Tarzan Boy. He, he but, may be long dead, but we'll figure uh, it out. <laughs> AI, baby. Well, then, then the retitle it Swamp Boy. It's, it's missing a syllable, but we'll still we'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, again, that, this is what AI, AI was created for, not for like creating Willy Wonka experiences. It was created <laughs> to help bring Baltimore back to life. <laughs> I was like again, like trying to pitch this to somebody, anybody. <laughs> just like we're bringing in Baltimore. He may be dead, and the title may be one syllable short, but we're gonna make that song, that spin-off single, a hit. I'm telling you, it's gonna work, baby. It is absolutely. You know what? As good as Jungle, uh, I was gonna say Jungle Boy. That's the wrestler who uses yeah, Tarzan yeah. Boy. As good as Tarzan Boy is, Jukebox Boy is a better Baltimore song. And yeah, I said it. I said it. And I know it might sound like almost exactly the same song, but I don't care. Yeah, you were doing your hipstery ways, John, right. having to come in with, like, I, I prefer Baltimore's more obscure stuff myself. The, it His is all the big song. hit. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm picking another big single. I'm not picking some B-side, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think the, uh, Baltimore's obscure stuff is, like, literally any other song. Any, any that aren't those two. The, uh, there's not mm. very many others. I only found out recently he's not, uh, he's not Italian, even though... He's part of the Italo scene. Well, he was the, he was the Derry guy. That was yeah. uh, one of Derry's big claims to fame was Bolton. I'm surprised in the TV show Derry Girls, they never really bring it up. But that's that would have been like, in, in the 90s in Derry, this would have been huge. What are you talking about, Baltimore? <laughs> See, Come on. And you've probably brought it up to me, but it was probably like 3 a.m. when we're pissed and it's on YouTube. So I've forgotten. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when I found out, I was like, wait, no, hang on. He's... He's part of the Italo scene. His producer's Italian and everything. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Irish. <laughs> Subterranean, like, infiltration is how you do it. <laughs> He's like, he, like a swamp boy who knows gator tactics. What you do <laughs> is, you, you originally come from Derry, you hang back pretending you're Italian, and then all of a sudden you're the Italo scene. <laughs> oh, Derry's not exotic enough, eh? It is to me. I've not been there. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah, to me, Derry just seems common as muck. But now, like, now with the advent of Derry Girls... I, I bring it out in conversation when we're like, this is like a, now it's like, it's a catnip to people. Because yeah. they're like, oh, that show. Like, oh, so weird and funny, that show. It's like, well, yes, I am exotic. Because oh, I that's how you get the laid, road okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing up the Derry Girls. Ah, that's how you do it. <laughs> and people are like, now I have a question for you. What is it with Derry? And I'm like, I've got a question for you. Why are you still here? <laughs> uh, this, this is obviously the morning after, you understand. <laughs> you sleaze back. <laughs> um, where the hell are we even? Let me we're at, we oh, actually are at the end of the minute, I believe. <laughs> well, we get one of the greatest bits of the movie, though. Well, well, first, there's a there's an awesome, awesome shot of a um, one of the ninjas laying dead, face down in the river, as blood pours into the water. Mm, like mm. I actually thought, oh, that's that's good. That's a really yeah. well done shot. Like um, they get like the the thickness of the blood too, so it doesn't just yeah. instantly disperse. I was like, oh, it's just well well composed that shot actually. Yeah, and it seems again, I've never sliced someone with a sword, but to me that seems like how the blood would come out rather than just p- pissing out like ridiculous water. You know? Yeah, it's it's pouring out realistically in my mind as a viewer. Hmm. I mean, probably all it is is a guy like literally face down in the water with a little squirty bottle just going probably yeah. <laughs> like right next to him. But the trick is don't squeeze it too much. You got to squeeze mm. it the right amount, you know. Like that that advice goes for lots of things in life, <laughs> but especially with blood bottles. Get your mind out of the swamp, John. Well, my mind's always in the swamp. Um, <laughs> we get another classic shot of Mark after that, mm. holding the sword aloft with a demented grimace on his face, right? And I don't mean that in a mocking way. I'm not I'm not making fun of him. It's just he's gone insane, rightly yeah, so, yeah. perhaps. You know? Mm. He's lost his mind, and you feel for him. Mm. Does so it no know wonder he's, like, he's doing that face. Like, what a face, strong emotion. He looks like he's going to cry. Yeah, and then that's again, like, Y.K. Kim's, like, actual acting. <laughs> like... 
I'm sure a lot of people will be like, oh, he's overdoing everything. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling for him every time. Like, Well, if, if one of my best friends just got sliced potentially to death by drug-dealing motorcycle ninjas in a swamp, yeah. I would be reacting the same. And it's like the fifth time they've attacked you as well. You're like, Jesus Christ, I just want to be left alone. What's going on? <laughs> exactly. Like, fucking hell. He, they've tried everything not to have this happen. It, they're actively trying to have no fights up until they had to rescue their friend from a tower. Yeah. Like like he was fucking Princess Peach. <laughs> yeah, Donkey Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I love the way, maybe it's showing our age, but you, you called back to the proper original mm. Princess Peach capturing by Donkey Kong. Oh, of course. Of Most course, people yeah. would think, oh, yeah, you know, Bowser. No, because in my mind, I was referencing Donkey Kong. Mm. And I'm so happy you went there because other I think people maybe wouldn't it, go there. It might have been because I was imagining them on, on top of some scaffolding. That might have helped. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. But, um, but no, this is basically like the image from uh, our cover art as well. You probably not thought yep. it's been that long since you've seen it because the show's been going for like two years or whatever now. But hey, like... I see it all the time because I've got to log into the Facebook and do all that kind yeah. of stuff, and that's the logo. And uh, yes, I um, I did I commissioned this exact uh, I was going to say scene, but this exact still mm-hmm. from um, a, a a very good Mexican artist I enjoy. I get him to do lots of work because I don't want to overburden Nile who's already mm-hmm. doing all the Batman stuff. So I'm like, well, I'll outsource it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's, it's a beautiful piece of work it is as well. So, yeah, you I can love get what that. he does. It's a unique style. Yeah, you can get that on a T-shirt, on a towel, uh, on a, the, in the back of a gi, potentially. I don't know. Like, be a, the Fred Bubble or uh, T-Public should expand out into gis, quite frankly. But, well, let's... let's um see what they do i know if we if we um open a shop on what's the other one people are using now um i can't remember there's another one where they do like skateboards and stuff oh nice, nice i nice. know because i remember star wars minute got like a star wars minute skateboard made and they were like well neither of us skate but it just looks cool on the wall yeah yeah totally totally um so yeah, let's no, pick... if i could get a batman skateboard i totally would yeah 100%. You, you can i'll find out what the shop is and we can make one so miami minutes um let's have a look so the artist, uh, it's it's Raziel, by the way, everybody. Uh, mm-hmm. But, oh, I need to change the mug. I'm not happy with the mug. Uh, mm-hmm. I have full full control over this. So, no, not as much. There's a pillow. Mm-hmm. You, can get a pillow you can get a tapestry. <laughs> An actual fucking tapestry. You can get a baby's bodysuit. Yeah. Okay. Phone case. I was, I'm assuming you mean like a baby grow, not like a sort of weird suit that makes you look like a baby that you get into. No, that would be amazing. That would be fucking brilliant. Mm. We're doing that. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem to have as much as I thought. Maybe, yeah, maybe but they're not there. even doing the the COVID masks anymore. Remember that was a thing. That was yeah, like a I weird merchandising boom. Here. We saw loads sort of, of those. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird thing. I'm like, oh, you know, the world's going to grab. By the way, buy this thing now. <laughs> it's that was like... that was raking in a bit of cash for us, actually. Especially for some reason, everyone was buying the the Hedvig ones, and that was that was chipping in a couple of pounds every now and then to the pot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's magnets. Oh, uh, hang on, the picture oh, looked it's... like a like a scientific magnet, but it's a fridge magnet. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like. What? <laughs> I know the picture is a, a fucking science magnet, like he'd use it in class, you know. Mm. Uh, no, the masks seem to have gone, but there's mugs, which I can't afford because the postage of the mug to the UK yeah. would be ridiculous. No, that's, that's exactly what's happened to me a couple of times. Where like for every time, like my dad's birthday, Christmas, I'm just like, oh, I'll get him like a. He might appreciate like a Batman mug or something because yeah, like to you think know, of you. A, yeah, and then every time I'm like hovering over like to, to order and I was like yes yeah, 20 quid for shipping I'm like what get the hell out of here yeah it's just, unfortunately listeners well probably fortunately for you because most listeners are American our shop is in America yeah so yeah. it's it's hard for us to get them <laughs> not you you can get it easy uh, mm-hmm. some of the we can get the t-shirts easy the t-shirts they can print them in Europe and, and get them to us but the mugs and stuff nah 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 they all come from America yeah yeah so if anyone um, wants to buy a mug over there and then send it to us, great. <laughs> to, to, that'd be very appreciated. As long as it doesn't break. Mm. To be honest, the postage would probably be the fucking same because you've got to pack it. And, ah, jeez. Um, how did we get onto the? Oh, the, the the still, amazing shot. Love it, love it, love it. 
Um, but then a whole troop of new ninjas arrive on the scene. This is what I was talking about. They just keep coming. Keep coming. They're respawning like a video game. Mm. Mark is in full swing. He runs right up the bank to take them on. He's only just jumped down the bank, but he's running back mm. up. <laughs> and the minute ends before more murder. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to see that. Will these, will these be the guys to finally kill Mark? Is this <laughs> no. the last we've seen of the water dragon? Who can say? I'm betting probably not. <laughs> no, but... the, the water dragon is, you know, he's he's unbeatable. You cannot mm. kill him. <laughs> it's a, he's but, a thousand again, the... years old, Nile. He's a god. He's he's it's, a bit, it's like Mortal Kombat with Raiden. You know, mm. he's the water <laughs> god. Are going to be our um, the Denis Villeneuve uh, two part adaptation will of course star Christopher Lambert as Mark. <laughs> Every uh, movie should have Christopher Lambert in it. <laughs> Also, yeah. <laughs> like, he does a little a... laugh as Raiden in that movie, actually. That I, it's been burned into my mind since like 1994 or whatever it was, mm. where he just goes like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> <I can't> even... <laughs> it's just the most amazing cackle. He's like, ha! Uh, yeah, he's a great screen pro- Like, I'm surprised he doesn't get more stuff. Like, yeah. I, I mean, so no, from like if watching Highlander now, it's 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 very obvious that apparently like he was a guy who didn't speak English at no, all when no. he made it. Uh, he desperately needed glasses, but they, then he couldn't get his contacts. So he could barely see anything that was in front of him on, while, while he was acting. Like, the, 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 uh, that's a, one of my favorite moments of anything ever is, um, is a bit where Lambert's walking. Like, he goes to, like, the love interest's house. Mm. And he walks around and he picks up, he finds, like a, like, a handgun she has there. And it's a shot of Christopher Lambert looking at this handgun. His eyes very clearly crossed because he can't see what it is in front of him. Oh, bless his eyes him. <laughs> and he just delivers the line, I love your place, Brenda. Uh, in a very, a very Tommy Wiseau-esque manner, actually. <laughs> uh, which is just like, this is fantastic. But like, yeah, Highlander is just a, a baffling film franchise in that like everything about it is so B-level. It should be a straight-to-video forgotten cult oddity. But somehow they got Sean Connery in it and Queen to do the soundtrack, and everybody knows Highlander, even though it's just like, yeah, it's just like ridiculous, campy dreck. But like, people love it. It's amazing. So, hell yeah. Um, but, um, but uh, uh, <laughs> I think we're finished a minute now, are we? Yeah, basically. I mean, the only other thing I've really got is that I really enjoy, and I don't think we've brought it up, the, the sort of swoosh sound in the music. It keeps going. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. It's I a bit unsettling. Why. Yeah. I think it, the thing is, it's, a, it's very, like, sort of, like, it's not it's not normal sounding. You feel like something's slightly off, and things are getting more erratic and running off the rails a bit, so... Erratic, exactly. Like, it makes me think of both John and Mark turning their heads. It's, it's, it's a head-turning sound, if that makes sense. Like, whoo. Yeah. You're looking to the left, you're looking to the right. Here I am. Mm. Stuck in the middle of you. No, um, <laughs> well, it was almost those lyrics. It was kind of close, <laughs> close, <laughs> close enough for me to uh, say that. Um, but yeah, I, so I really like the the music work there. Um, a lot of the music in the movie is good, and we don't bring it up a lot, to be honest. We, mm. we bring up the songs, but the yeah, actual, yeah. you know, just like the background kind of score, really good. Mm. Effective, yeah, they, 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 gets the emotion across, gets the vibe across. This makes you feel a bit panicked, but without you know beating you over the head with it. Mm, mm. Well, I think it's, they, they, they did. They outsourced it to like a different guy. The yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so like I think yeah, they got a proper professional. In for, for the, not, what are you saying? Not, <laughs> never to knock Angelo. Obviously, you know, God amongst men and stuff like yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, but scoring a movie and writing tunes are different things. That's why it's amazing. Danny Elfman can do all of it. Yeah, that's yeah. why he's such a uh, you know uh, an amazing person because some of the best songwriters in the world couldn't write a score. Hmm. Mm. But yeah, yeah, and he just he hops back and forth between worlds. The the, yeah. the elf man. So. Yeah, yeah. Although mm. I, isn't he cancelled at the minute? I don't know. There was a thing. It didn't seem to get much traction, uh. but I believe so. Yeah, I think he's currently. Under, but then, they, yeah, but the, you know, that Beatles U2 is, two is still going to come out. He's no. still doing the scores. So it's going to be a thing of like, you're either addressing it or we're not, you know, the media. What do you want here? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Mm. But um, yes, I'm all noted down. Should we break the connection? 
I believe we, I believe we shall. Again, once again, sitting down with no notes <laughs> to talk about a minute where nothing happened. Uh, plus, it doesn't happen. That's going to be about 25, 30 minutes that I'm slicing out for bonus material. <laughs> perfectly fine, perfectly fine. If you want the bonus material, it's on Patreon. Um, you know, our, our network, Sleepy Charlie Media. I am behind at posting it, though, because work has... Work went from being completely dead to being the busiest thing I've ever experienced in my life. (laughs) Overnight. Insane. Mm. Absolutely bonkers. And it's apparently just going to keep going for the next few weeks. And then it might stop. But so I will get back on track with that. But you've still got plenty of back stuff to listen to, both deleted stuff, other episodes. So do check it out. Uh, Speak to us on Facebook at the Miami Minutes Taekwondo Orphanage. Um, Because most people don't. I see the downloads, but you're not on the Facebook. Yeah, I think Facebook's yeah. for boomers these days. Mm. Apparently, we're boomers, even though we're not. We're millennials. <laughs> but that's how the world works now. Apparently, mm. someone my age said, "Oh, I don't go on Facebook anymore. It's for boomers." And I was like, no. "What? Wait, what?" what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Though I was, I was talking about that um, that lady I was talking to yesterday, who was like her, you know, her mm. favorite movie was all all that stuff. Apparently. 23 years old, no social media. Like she says, like I've made a point of not having a leaving okay. a digital footprint. And now I'm thinking, I wonder if that's going to be the thing of young people will be like, no, yeah. I'm not doing that because I grew up with that and I'm I'm out, baby. Like I don't want anything to do with it. I, I get anymore. it. I get it. You know, um, I'm a big fan of the internet and things like that. Always have been. But I realized when actually when I was sat watching June two, mm? it dawned on me. I was like, you know what? I'm really enjoying this. But when I'm at home, every 10 minutes I'll pick up my phone. Yeah, yeah. I can't not do it now. And Mm. I don't want to do that. Because what am I really getting? 99% of the time, I'm not actually getting anything out of it. Mm. I'll just see someone (laughs) whinging about some fucking non-binary wrestler that they don't like the fact the commentators are calling them they, them. And Mm. and then I'll get into a fight. (laughs) And, it's and like, then you'll be distracted from the thing that you're watching. Exactly, well. <laughs> and I've got to rewind the fucking movie, and it's it's yeah. it's not enjoyable. I, sh- I need to not not come off it because I think that's sad as well, but limit it, mm. reduce it oh, sensibly. Totally, totally. You know, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's, yeah. I, I, uh, I always leave my phone in another room if I'm going to go like properly watch something. So I'm that's like, a good idea, but I'd fucking get up and go into the other room to get it. <laughs> I need like a locker. You can get those timed lockers. I think most people using them are like cooks with like keys for. <laughs> um, but you can get them where it, it, you can set a timer on the lockers. So you, <laughs> you can't get your keys for your cock. <laughs> but you can put your phone in it. <laughs> so, what kind of shape is your cock, man? That <laughs> you're putting your phone in it. What the hell? <laughs> no, it's. It's a. You know, people. <laughs> People, some people enjoy the um, chastity, mm-hmm. and you can if you if you haven't got anyone involved, <laughs> you can put the keys in a timed locker. This is the things like really getting desperate if you're having to buy a chastity belt <laughs> just to, to, to lock your phone away. Jesus, people like it though, um, in that sense. And then I, it would be good for me with the phone. I could because then I can't touch it for the movie. Yeah, two hours. Yeah, there you go. Don't let me get the phone for two hours. Mm, mm. It's a good way to wean off it. That's a that's a reason too. Like I I still enjoy going to the cinema. Like actually, there you you can and people do take out their phones, uh, but it's sort of understood that you're not supposed to. And no, so most if people you do, do, everyone hates you and wants to stab you in the face. So yeah, so like even if I'm checking that fo- my phone during the trailers, I have oh, tra- kind of thing. I'm like, oop, like does I check it during there? the initial trailers. You know where it's just like cars and shit. Yeah. Not bothered then. But as soon as the actual trailers for movies come on and the lights come down a little bit, then I'm like, no, 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 the phone goes away then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's the same with talking. Happen. Like, you can talk during the shit trailers at the start. You don't talk <laughs> during the movie trailers. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's an environment that invites you to be like, no, no, no. You're turning everything off for a while. You're paying attention to this now. This is, what, this is what's happening. Well, I need to do that because if I bought a locker, everyone would think I was a cook. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone, everyone listening to this episode, it, it's already happened. You know? <laughs> I, I am someone who grew up watching... Uh, like not just Euro trash, but like weird sex programs on like Bravo. Hmm. So I know I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is before. I mean, I had the internet, but this is before it was widespread. I knew everything before everyone knew everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh. again, 
this, as this show always says, we're not going to yuck your yum. Enjoy what you yeah. enjoy. If that's your vibe, yeah. you do that. But for me, it's for the phone. Oh. <laughs> Did we, we stop talking about the minute like half an hour ago? I know, this I know. Point. This like, is going to be the worst edit of all time. Jesus Christ. Oh, I've got my work <laughs> cut out for me tomorrow, haven't I? So join us again in one week for minute 78 of my yummy minute. You cannot escape YK's sword of justice. I was just going to try to do like the synth sound effect. Of... That's staying in. Listen to me.